Our next presenter, the Miss Juliet Solomon, a representative of the Commonwealth, and she is here to share with us some thoughts as well. Ms. Juliet Solomon is Special Advisor and Head of CARICOM and Pacific Section in the Political, the Political Affairs Division of the Commonwealth. And so Ms. Juliet will come and share with us. And uh, she's becoming such a person, coming to St. Kitts. I wonder by now what kind of passport she does have because she's coming here pretty regularly. Let's put our hands together and welcome Ms. Solomon to St. Kitts once again. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Premier of Nevis, representatives, Honorable Representatives of Political Parties, my distinguished colleague, Ambassador Colin Grandison of, the, of, of CARICOM, where I used to work, members of the religious community, diplomatic corps and other organizations, members of the media, friends. I'm the person from the other places. It is a very great honor to be here today to witness the launch of the St. Kitts and Nevis Reform Exercise, as it has been called, Advancing Democracy Through Consultation. I bring first and foremost the best wishes of the Secretary General, the Honorable Don McKinnon. The Secretary General of the Commonwealth, during his tenure, has fought vigorously for small states, not only on election issues, but to empower them in the struggle for equitable trade arrangements in, the, in fora such as the Doha Trade Round. I am the Secretary General's Special Advisor and Head of the Caribbean and Pacific Section. And as a Caribbean person myself, and I know you want to know where I'm from, I am confident of the SG's commitment and empathy with the unique problems and challenges of small states. The white paper which is being launched today sets out a comprehensive program for electoral reform based, I understand, on the recommendations of both the Commonwealth Expert Group, which observed the 2004 St. Kitts and Nevis elections, and which, by the way, I was a member of, and the subsequent Commonwealth Assessment Mission undertaken in 2005 under the leadership of the Honorable David Thompson, who is now leader of the opposition in Barbados. I'd like to say a few words on the Commonwealth's program of democracy. The Commonwealth is committed to a set of fundamental values spelled out in the Harare Commonwealth Declaration of 1991, at the core of which is a belief in and adherence to democratic principles. We promote democracy through advocacy of democratic principles and practical application to help make them a reality. We do a great deal of election observation at the request of countries themselves. But our greater goal is the building of democracy and democratic practices themselves. We recognize the diversity and special circumstances of all countries within our Commonwealth family. As has been said, the present exercise grew out of recommendations made in our 2005 report. Let me say a few things about that. I'm currently spending a lot of time in Guyana because elections are pending there. We've been invited by President Jagdeo to have a presence there during the elections as we were obviously in, in 2004 by the Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. But we have done much more than that. We have provided technical assistance to both the Guyana Electoral Commission and to the Parliament. Someone asked a great question the day before yesterday because our observer group has kicked off and we're having consultations. And at our pre preliminary briefing for observers in Guyana, one of our observers asked us, he said, do we observe the elections based on the existing electoral laws of a country or based on international standards? Well, the short answer is both. Yes, Commonwealth observers, when they are invited to observe an election, 
do so within the framework of the existing laws and electoral framework of a country. But the report which we present, and let us bear in mind that these are independent experts, the recommendations are usually based on international electoral practices and accepted norms under the Harare principles to which all Commonwealth countries subscribe. We take a holistic view and we observe not just the elections themselves, but the entire electoral environment. There is sometimes a dichotomy between national electoral laws and accepted international standards. And even if there isn't, there's often room for improvement. That is why the Dem democracy program of the Commonwealth, that's what it's about, bringing all its members closer to the principles to which we have all voluntarily agreed. The Commonwealth view is clear. Elections are not the be all and end all of democracy. We strive to provide technical assistance to take our member states past the cut and thrust of election politics. We're often told that we observe elections and write reports that are never implemented. Yes, we are told, you guys write, a, you observe an election and write a fancy report, and then what? That is where our technical programs come in. We are more than happy to provide technical expertise to the process outlined today. And we are very happy that this is a living example of what happens after a report is written. As I said, we, are, we would be very pleased to provide technical assistance, and we did indeed with the assessment mission. Our only parameters are that the programs have the buy-in of all stakeholders. That's a fundamental. It is heartening to see today an attempt to translate our recommendations based on both national reality and international norms into a national consultation on how to go forward. As a Caribbean person, I am also aware that consultation agreement is often harder in small states. Dispassionate views are difficult. Everybody knows everybody and all of is one. Well, you know something, as we say in Trinidad, which is where I'm from, <laughs> <laughs> all talk is good talk. And it is particularly heartening that the chair of the ERCC said tonight that all discussions will be widely publicized. St. Kitts and Nevis is said to be the smallest state in the Commonwealth. And I think that the Commonwealth is the only international organization which sees this as a strength rather than a weakness. This could well be a test case for taking our democracy work to a new level. I've read the white paper and I'm impressed with the level of consultation envisaged. I look forward to the development of these consultations. I am especially impressed with the declaration contained in the white paper which says, and I'm reading from this, at the end of this process, the government and Saint Kitts of St. Kitts and Nevis is confident that it would have formulated and instituted a legally reformed electoral system through proper consultation with all social groups, through, and the gen, with all social groups, political parties, and the general public. The government will ensure that these reforms guarantee that future elections in St. Kitts and Nevis continue to be free and fair. Furthermore, and in keeping with our democratic and constitutional rights, these reforms will not disenfranchise any voter as the reforms seek to introduce a modern and efficient electoral system. I am confident that the consultations envisioned will be conducted in the same spirit in which Commonwealth observer missions and assistance is given, 
with wide consultation among all stakeholders. Let me say again, that is a great privilege to be here and pledge the Commonwealth's support to St. Kitts and Nevis's move towards greater democracy. I thank you all for inviting me here and the Commonwealth looks forward to working with you in the future. Finally, I would like to express my gratitude for having the opportunity to be here again in the wonderful islands of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you.